Are you looking to learn about security frameworks? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Mike Gibbs. In today's video, we're going to discuss security architecture frameworks. We'll describe what they are, and we'll also describe why organizations use security architecture frameworks. So to begin, what is a security architecture framework? Well, it's a structured and a repeatable way to design, implement, and govern security across the enterprise. So what it really is, to make it very simple, is we do it the same way every single time when we follow this framework. And that way, this architectural iteration, the next security architecture iteration, and the next one follows a standard process. Now, when we typically deal with the security architecture framework, it's going to define what we secure, uh, typically speaking by assets or data or services. Our security architecture framework will define to a degree how we secure it in terms of principles, controls, or patterns. And it will typically help us with who decides or governs and how we prove it. So say assurance and metrics. So there's several core elements to an architecture framework, especially a security architecture framework and domains across the entire security environment. So typically across identity and access management, there's typically something for data protection. There's typically something for application and API security. There's something typically for securing the infrastructure and securing the cloud. There's typically some form of detection and response system with some vulnerability and configuration management. Typically some third party or supply chain uh, management and how we address the risk of connecting to third parties. And there's typically things related to privacy and anything else that's gonna be relevant to our organizations. There is almost always a principle associated with the security architecture framework. Uh, for example, the principle of least privilege, don't give people anything more than they need to do their job. Or there's a zero trust approach where we never trust, we always verify, and we micro segment everything. And we encrypt absolutely everything, uh, for example, and that's a very brief overview of Zero Trust. There's videos on Zero Trust architectures on this channel, if you like, uh, many of them. Uh, my team will leave the link to a few of them in the description of this video for you. So there's typically a method and a life cycle. So we, how do we go from the current state? Um, what do we, how, do, here's our current state and what kind of threat or risk modeling are we doing? What is the target uh, state that we want to get to or the future architecture or the 2B architecture? And how do we go from where we're at to where we want to be? Uh, and there's typically some elements of how to do that. Now, in any architecture framework, especially security architecture framework, they always talk about artifacts so, that you might design. So there might be reference architecture patterns like zero trust or cloud landing zones or standards or baselines or design patterns that we want to use, uh, decision records, those types of things. And there's typically some type of governance that's recommended, whether it be an architectural review board or a design authority or some form of exception and waiver process. We need to do things that are a little different. And there's typically some form uh, in any security architecture frameworks of a repository of how and where you store your architectural documents or your architectural artifacts. And there are a lot of uh, security architecture frameworks. NIST provides a security architecture framework. Uh, for example, Zero Trust is a, is, a, is, a, is a security architecture framework. And of course, there's many, many others. So why do organizations use security architecture frameworks? Well, they're doing it to reduce risk and improve resilience. So, if you're designing constantly and you're following a standard repeatable methodology that typically includes some form of best practices, you typically create a better, higher impact security architecture. And you typically have something that uh, will respond better in terms of the challenges that exist. Now, by following any kind of architecture framework, we make sure that we align the needs of the security with the needs of the actual business. So we're connecting our security investments to business capabilities, knowing where we need to spend and what we need to protect and most uh, to protect the organization as best we can with the current budget that we will have in, the, have in their state. It also gives us some way to standardize and de-risk decisions by using common principles and common patterns and the ability to control where we're at and make defensible choices. 
it typically also speeds up things when we use any kind of architecture framework because if we know what goes into it and everything is being designed by with security by default and everything is integrated everything from from the secure application development to ci cd pipelines to making sure all the other things are necessary from the time the applications are even developed and everything else that would need to occur on the rest of the systems we typically have a more secure process to do things and by following any type of a framework, it helps us maintain any kind of regulatory compliance. Maybe we have to follow SOX compliance or PCI DSS compliance or HIPAA compliance or any type of other client compliance because most security architecture frameworks support uh, the support uh, what you support a process of being, of being able to document what you've actually done and adhere to regulatory environments. Now, we usually get lower cost and lower complexity when we use an architecture framework because it helps us really define what we need and when we need it. We spend less time doing things and we typically have less sprawl. So typically lowers cost and complexity that way. And it helps us determine what matters because in any real architecture framework, a good security architecture framework, initially you're defining what matters as part of the entire process. So you know those key performance indicators that you need to measure. And then you can look at other controls that you need to measure as well and determine the effectiveness of your security architecture pattern. And then I also, the last major component of an, any security architecture framework is keeping institutional knowledge. So you're creating a repository of what's been done, what worked, what didn't work, and everything else along the way. And that makes it easier to make decisions in the future. So in today's video, we discussed what is a security architecture framework and why organizations use security frameworks or security architecture frameworks. Now, if you'd like to become a security architect or an AI architect or an enterprise architect or a cloud architect, we run two free weekly architecture webinars per week. And on these architecture webinars, we'll describe what you would do say as a security architect, what are the security architect skills, what you need to do to get your first job as a security architect. And it's live and free on Zoom. So you can ask me any kind of security architect career or enterprise architect career questions you absolutely desire. And I'll do anything I can to help you on these free architecture sessions. You can register for one of these free architecture sessions in the description of this video. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your security architect career or enterprise architect career or any other architect career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I hope to see you in another video or a free webinar where we can meet face-to-face -face and talk. Take care. Hope to see you soon.